Vikings quarterback Kirk Cousins suffered what unfortunately looks to be a significant season-ending injury to his right lower leg here. And in this video, we'll take a closer look at the footage and what exactly happened. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter and my goal in this channel is to help teach you about the medical side of the sports world. So if you're new here and you enjoy learning about anatomy and sports medicine topics, then please consider subscribing. Let's go right to the play here for what we're dealing with with Kirk Cousins. And unfortunately, the concern here, I think we've all seen enough of these recently, especially with Aaron Rodgers, is for an Achilles rupture. I think the big giveaway right away as we're looking straight on here with Cousins, we can see as he plants, we're looking at this right foot. And remember, pay attention to the positions of the ankle whenever it comes to the load placed on the Achilles. The Achilles is running along the back side of the ankle. Whenever it fires, it's going to plantar flex or push the foot and ankle downward. So if you think of going the opposite direction, if you dorsiflex or pick the ankle up, bring the toes up towards the tibia, that's going to stress and put extra tension on the Achilles. So here as Cousins is getting ready to plant with that right foot, we see that reverberation kind of go up through his right calf, okay? So right here, if you pay close attention, we see him plant, he's dorsiflexed, and then we see that sudden little pop and he kind of picks up that right leg like something immediately happened that he felt. If you look at this view from behind, we can actually get another interesting perspective on this. And again, we're looking at this right side. And so as he comes back and plants, it's right before he goes to step and push off. So right here. As he steps backwards, he's gonna load that Achilles complex, that gastroc under eccentric load, meaning it's being stretched, it's being lengthened, but it's trying to fire at the same time. And so then it's already in a compromised position. He then goes to try and plantar flex and push off, which is when we're gonna see that snap occur. The other important lesson here though is that the Achilles actually has a little bit of a twist to it. As it comes down and inserts into the calcaneus, it has a little bit of this rotational component. And you can tell in this position when Kirk has his foot pointed outward in this external rotation, that's gonna cause his foot and ankle to pronate a little bit, meaning it's gonna roll inward, especially people who have flatter feet, they have that increased pronation. And that increased pronation is also gonna put some increased tension on the Achilles as he then goes to push off. And we don't see that snap here, but that of course was the moment where it occurred. So walking through it again, remember as you step and plant, right here, the ankle gets dorsiflexed upwards, that puts eccentric load tension on the Achilles. And then as he goes to try and push off, we ultimately see as the snap occurs, that reverberation gets sent upwards through the calf. For a quick little anatomy lesson with this, of course, remember that the Achilles tendon is sometimes called the triceps surae because there's three different muscles and tendons that come together to form it. Of course, on the top, you have the gastrocnemius, a medial head on the inside, a lateral head on the outside. Deep to the gastrocnemius, you have the soleus muscle. The soleus then comes in from the deep side to join up into the Achilles tendon. And then also remember there's a little muscle tendon in here called the plantaris. We typically don't really think about it much, but it actually sits behind the medial gastroc. So it's this thin little muscle belly up here at the knee and this big long tendon that comes down along the medial or inner portion of the Achilles tendon. When we have an Achilles tendon rupture, that's gonna be a complete tear of that tendon, typically occurring somewhere in a region about four to six centimeters from the calcaneus, because that's this watershed zone where there's not as good blood supply and the tendon is more compromised and likely to get injured if it's gonna get injured at that spot. So that's it for the video, everybody. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.